In this video I will show you how to paint this white dog without using any black or gray pigments. His name is Bond, which I think is very appropriate since he's a West Highland White Terrier. He's the agent of cuteness, so to say. The reference photo is good quality, but it doesn't have a lot of color. But I wanted to make this painting very cheerful, very joyful and colorful. So to help me find color in this photo, the first thing I did was increase the saturation in the reference photo. I did it in Photoshop, but it's also very easy to do in any photo editing program or app or even just using your cell phone. And you can see this is the result. Some color started to appear in the photo. It's pretty subtle, but it will be kind of my starting point for my painting. I also converted this photo into black and white and printed it out. And now you see how I'm using charcoal on the back side of that printout to transfer the dog onto watercolor paper. It's not hard to draw the dog, but I might end up with way too many pencil lines and then I will have to erase them and that will damage the surface of watercolor paper. So I try to keep the graphite lines to a minimum. So this was my prep work and now we can start painting. First thing I'm going to do is lightly spray my paper with clean water and pick up the excess of water with paper towels so my paint doesn't sink into the fibers right away. As you see I'm starting with lemon yellow on the shadow side of the dog. After I increased the saturation in the photo I noticed something very interesting. The light that comes from the window on the left side of the dog is very cool because it's winter and it's snow outside. So even though usually I paint warm lights and cool shadows, in this case, it's going to be reversed. The light is going to be cool and the shadows will be warm. So it will be a really interesting experiment for me, even from this point of view. I cover the shadow side of the dog with lemon yellow in new gamboge and now I'm working on light midtones using cobalt blue. The dog is very fluffy so there is a lot of texture but for now I need to paint large forms so I'm trying to unify all those little shadows and see larger areas where I need to apply my watercolors. So the midtone on the light side is going to be blue and shadows will be yellow. And I think I will add some orange at the end. At least I see the cast shadow is very orange. The dog's ears are pink, but I don't want to use pink in only one spot. There is a little bit of reflected light that's pink tinted that I see on the lower jaw and on the chest of the dog. So let's drop in a bit of upper pink. And also on the ears, he's getting very colorful. I'm working with very diluted paint because I don't want intense colors. I want to keep the illusion of white. And I'm also careful to keep white on the left side where the dog is brightly lit. So the lights are going to be paper. I will correct the edges with white artist gouache, but preserving white paper is also very important, especially when painting white subjects. This is the first wash on the dog and now let's add the background so the dog will stand out a little better and I will follow the same principle. I'm kind of looking at my photo and I'm trying to see all those colors. It seems like there is a little greenish tint on the carpet. I'm going to use sap green. The cast shadow is very orange, I can clearly see that, so permanent orange for that. Again, light wash for now. I think this is the first time when I actually paint cool lights and warm shadows, the reverse color temperatures, so I'm even curious myself to see how this turns out. 
Uh, that's what color theory teaches us. It should work in theory, so we will see if applied to practice this theory actually works. I have several more examples of painting white, gray, and black animals without using any black or gray pigments that make them dull and uninteresting. I will leave you all the links in the description below this video. And I also have a class if you want to study that subject in depth. My class is called Painterly Pet Portraits and the link can be found in the video description and also on my website tamirab.com classes. Alright, my painting is dry. If I squint when I look at the reference photo I see that dog ears need to be a lot darker so I am just going to use pretty much the same colors that I used for the first layer but in a lot more intense form. I'm going to pick up a lot more pigment and I'm using a much smaller brush to paint. Need to work on the dog's face. The areas around the eyes have shadow. That fringe that he has, his hair on his forehead casts a shadow on the eyes. So we're going to paint that. starting to find smaller forms. The ones I'm painting might be just a little too small. We will see. I might be getting into details too soon. So his big black nose is going to be somewhere here. I can't really see my pencil very well anymore. So I am drawing with a brush basically. So I'm carefully looking at my reference photo and trying to draw with a brush. Yeah, I think I need to unify those shapes. I painted just way too many small shapes and my painting is getting too dark. So I need to wash some of this off and pick up the excess pigment with my paper towel. He's getting too dark on the light side, but it's easy to fix. We can lift the paint and let's work on the shadow side on that lemon yellow reflected light. He has some of the secondary light kind of seeping through on the right hand side but there is pretty distinct shadow as well there and i'll remind you in case you're wondering i am not painting that toothbrush i think it interferes with the dog and it's just not necessary for my painting <music> Deep shadows have very warm orange cast to them. I can see it clearly, so that's what I'm applying. Some more permanent orange. And let's paint his paws. I'm just using saturated wash of cobalt blue. And because my other areas are so light, it gives me illusion of dark color, illusion of black, but I am not using any black pigments. This is going to be a rainbow colored dog. And hopefully at the end you'll be able to tell that he's, uh, he's white. I think I'm going to neutralize the shadow a little bit. That orange is way too intense, so I'm mixing it with a bit of blue to neutralize it. And then I will bring in some pure pigment. But closer to, to the dog, I need that shadow to recede. So I think a little more neutral tint of orange will work better. And let's soften the edge. You can't really tell where the edge of the shadow is, so it needs to be soft. Let the watercolor run and mix. And you can see the dog is starting to take shape because I'm darkening the background, I'm increasing the contrast between light and shadow areas and that's what gives the dog the illusion of volume, of being three-dimensional. I 
I want to keep transparency of my shadows. That's why I'm picking up some of the pigment. I applied quite a, a lot of it. It's um, semi-transparent pigment, but I wanted the paper to still show through the layer of paint. The cast shadow will be darker, close to the dog. I wanted to say the object, but I just can't call him the object. <laughs> Closer to the puppy. Lots of and lots of texture on the fur. And the texture is not something that I paint at the end. It's uh, incorporated in my brushwork. So those feathery brush strokes that I apply create the texture of the fur. As you know, with watercolor, it's very hard to control edges. So I will use some white gouache to get the, the edges the way they need to be. Okay, this is my second layer. I let it dry and all I have left to do is apply the darkest darks and the highlights. I'm going to use Antwerp blue. It's a cool transparent blue. I mixed it with some of my permanent orange just to neutralize it a little bit so it's not like bright blue to bring it closer to black even though it's not obviously precisely black color and I'm going to paint the darkest darks on the dog with a small pointy brush. His eyes, I'm trying to leave some highlights in the eyes. They're not super bright because his fur doesn't let the light fall directly onto his eye. So there will be slight variation of tone. This eye needs a little correction. It was a little too close. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Okay, that's the face. And now let's find some more dark spots because you don't want the face to be the only dark area. His paws are pretty dark. I can see the little pads on his feet can be darkened. They're not dark enough. Find some darks in the fur on the shadow side. A little more texture on the face. His chest has pretty dark shadows and that area between his paws is very dark. So it will be good to add some more pigment there. Okay, that's it for the darkest darks, let's use some artist gouache to correct the edges and bring back some of the highlights. I try to preserve white paper on the left hand side where the light hits the dog the brightest, but I couldn't quite feather out the brush strokes. So I'm going to use a small liner brush and apply those highlights and give the dog even more texture to reflect his fluffiness properly. There will be some reflected light on the right side of his head. So I need to bring back that lighter area as well. And that's it. Here is the final result. A white Westie named Bond painted with watercolor and white gouache. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will try painting cool lights and warm shadows and let me know in comments if your experiment was successful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video here on Tamirup Studios channel. Bye.